What if I were to tell you that reality is not what it seems, that it isn't nearly as physical as you might have been led to believe? In fact, our reality is actually closer to 99.999999% empty space and energy and only 00.000001% what we call physical matter reality. Now, if this is the case, which cutting edge science suggests it is, along with many of the most famous researchers like Max Planck, Heisenberg, Bohr, Tesla, and many others would seem to suggest that it is, wouldn't it make sense that focusing more on the 99.9 plus percent that actually makes up this reality would provide better results for ourselves rather than focusing mainly on the tiny percentage that makes up the physical part of our world like most people tend to focus on. In my eyes, absolutely it would do ourselves a world of good in order to focus on that 99.9 .9 plus percent. And this is not just lip service, this is based on real scientific data, things that certain cultures and civilizations have known well beyond before we had the data. And I've also seen it work in real time with myself and clients who I help them to do this through certain particular processes that we're going to touch upon today. So in this video, we're going to go over how to master manipulating energy, cultivating energy, and give you a clear understanding of what's happening here and how you can influence it. And through this influence, you'll be able to shape more of your physical world to a point where it almost seems like you can bend reality to your energetic will. So we're going to cover how this works, some analogies to help you understand this at a deeper level. And as always, I'm going to give you some tools you can start to apply right away so you are actually getting real results in your life. Because at the end of the day, that's what's important here. It's not about having more information and then knowing and not doing. It's giving you things that will help you grasp this, have an understanding of this, a working understanding, so that you can then put it into work, which will lead to results. So if you want to start creating a reality that will allow you to be much more joyful, healthy, abundant, loving, bring more of the physical manifestations you want into your life, then stick with me here, really absorb what we're gonna be going over in this video, and let's jump into it. So before we jump into how to really cultivate energy, direct it in your life so it produces certain results, we need to go over why reality is subject to influence and why it is the outside world follows the inner. Because without this awareness, it's going to be really hard to know where to put your attention, what actions to take, and some of the tools I give you later in the video may not make that much sense or you won't understand how profound they really are if you don't have this level of understanding. One of my favorite ways to describe the physical world and the energetic world and kind of their relationship, and of course it's more nuanced than this, but a very easy way to put it, is that the physical world is simply an energetic history. You see, it takes a certain amount of time for things to appear on the physical, while in the mental and the emotional or spiritual realm, it can happen instantaneously. But you need enough time to pass with certain things being activated on these other planes for them to start showing up in the physical, thus having an energetic history in the physical. So everything you see around me, even though you can just really see that wall, but I have some books over there, I have my home here, I have my dog outside looking at me eagerly wanting to come back in, wondering what I'm doing. All of these things are an energetic history uh, that are now in my present because of where I was putting my attention the most of the time in the past. And we'll dive a little deeper into this so you understand and also understand the profundity of this and how you can use this to start shifting things in your life. But it's a really good idea to keep in mind that the physical world is simply your energetic history. Now, an easier way to understand this is to understand first and foremost that you are not just a physical being. You are actually a three-part being who exists on three planes of existence. Now, the physical one is what most people are familiar with. It's easy to be like, yeah, I'm in a physical world. I have my physical five senses. I can touch this. I can hear this. I can see that. I can smell this. I can taste that. Whatever else it is. Most of us have that understanding because most of us have been conditioned to more or less only look at that throughout our lives. However, you are a three-part being that also consists of mental, um, a mental world and a spiritual world. You are spirit, mental, and physical. But these two other areas, the spiritual and mental, often are forgotten or they are 
talked about as if they're things just happening to you instead of things that you can cultivate and build in the same way that you can cultivate and build in the physical world. So keep that in mind. You are not just a physical being. You are also a spiritual being and a mental being. And it's actually the cultivation of all three of these planes of existence that's going to allow you to shape reality as you will or to use energy because of the priorities of these planes of existence so that it starts showing up as an energetic history, the energy you're shaping in these other realms in your physical. Now, I want to give you something that I mentioned in the intro that may have blown your mind or maybe even was hard for you to believe, but this is something you can look into and it's absolutely backed by the data. But reality, um, our reality that we live in, the life that you live is actually 99.999999% empty space and energy and only 0.000001% physical matter reality. And this is what we're talking about. Most people are focusing on that tiny percentage. And if you're focusing on that tiny percentage, which is statistically negligible when it comes to what actually makes up your life, don't you think it's going to be really hard to influence your life? Don't you think you're always going to be fighting against life instead of being able to be um, at cause for certain things? You're always going to be at effect rather than be at cause, right? You're always going to have an energetic history that you probably don't want because you're focusing on this tiny fraction and I mean, it's the tiniest, tiniest minuscule percentage of what reality is trying to shape reality from there instead of putting and shifting your focus to that 99.9 plus percent. And that 99.9 plus percent is made up of your spiritual and mental planes of existence. This is actually how the law of attraction works. This is how the law of balance works at a deeper level. The principle of cause and effect, correspondence, and other things from hermetic wisdom is that things first occur on the spiritual and mental plane. You focus on certain things in those realms. Now, the spiritual plane, just to make this very simple, put it in very simple terms, you can think of like your emotional world, your energy in motion. You can think of your spiritual. It's also your connection to the divine and kind of the larger source of what you are, but you can think of it like the emotional, um, your emotional home, your emotional reality, because the way you activate the spiritual plane of existence is via emotion again, which is energy in motion. Now the mental is one that we, most of us can believe and kind of conceptualize a little more. This is your thoughts. This is your visual images. These are the things that you're able to think about, which also play a really big part in law of attraction, because I'm sure you've heard of the idea that thoughts are things. You get what you think about most of the time. And to complete that even more, we can add, you get what you think about and feel about most of the time, which activates the spiritual side of this, um, which is actually, in my eyes, the more important part. Because what you're thinking of is ultimately trying to elicit an emotion and energy that you will then connect to, which will then eventually, if you stay there long enough, create an energetic history, which we know as the physical. You see, through the law of correspondence, which you've probably heard of the saying, as above, so below, and as below, so above, we interact on all planes of existence in this way, meaning as so, uh, as of below in the physical, so above in the spiritual and mental and vice versa, meaning these always are in correspondence and have a level of alignment and balance. What this means is you will never find someone who is spiritually low conscious, who's then thinking very positively, most likely thinking very negatively, has negative visualizations, who then has a happy, abundant, amazing physical life or an energetic history that they want. But on the flip side, you will almost never find someone. In fact, I would argue you would never find someone who spiritually is so fulfilled, is in high levels of consciousness, embraces the chaos in life and is able to remain calm in those situations and most of the time is feeling just fucking amazing, genuinely. You will not find that person that negative of a thinker. They're probably thinking amazingly positively. They're probably setting out amazing intentions, which elicit certain feelings. They probably have amazing visualizations. They probably think really good thoughts most of the time. You will not find that person in terrible physical circumstances. In fact, you will probably find that person is happy, very wealthy, doing things that they love, doing whatever it is their heart desires. Maybe if they want to travel, that's probably what they're doing. If they want to have an amazing peer group, that's probably what they have. If they want to have an amazing job that they love to do, they probably have that. You will find that this kind of person lives an abundant life because of the law of correspondence. You cannot, by law, 
on principle, be those things in the inner world, which is made up of the spiritual and mental, and not have the corresponding results or effects occur on the physical. And you can go the other way around too, for I'm sure you've heard of things like, there, you know, if you correct your posture, it'll help you to feel better. Take a cold polar plunge and see how you feel after that. It will affect your physical or your spiritual and mental um, state of being, right? So they all have effects on each other. And so when we can activate certain things on the spiritual and mental especially, it will lead to changes over time in the physical, which just takes a little more time because it's a denser rate of vibration. Now I'm gonna give you an analogy that we give to our EMS students who are on a six month reality creation, co uh, reality creation coaching program. Um, and we call this the video game analogy. And we just use a popular game, World of Warcraft, to make it very, very simple. And ultimately, if you think of World of Warcraft, let's say you're an elf character, you're this character in the game. Now, if you're the elf character, you probably think that everything around you is very real. You're interacting with other elves or other characters or whatever else. You're kind of going on missions and you're doing whatever it is. But ultimately, we are not the elf. That is a subset of what's called a superset. You see, without the computer that runs the game, there is no game. And that computer is where the rules to the game are programmed and they program them into the game. But if we were to look around just our physical world and the physical laws, we may think that's it. But these laws are coming out from somewhere. The spiritual and mental plane represent the computer. Right? It represents the greater computer system or the superset which actually programs the game. And when you pause the elf and you go away from being the character and you move more into what we call the actor who chooses the roles or who you know, really starts interacting more with consciousness, with the spiritual side, with the mental side, you can suddenly program cheat codes into the game. You can suddenly tap into greater powers that can be then used in the game. You can suddenly tap into that 99.9 .9 plus percent that is the computer and consciousness rather than the 0.000001% that is the elf or character on screen. So stick with me here for a sec. Now this is an analogy we dive really deep into into the program, but ultimately most people are identifying as the elf on screen. They're not even aware that they're being projected onto a screen. They're not aware that there's a greater system at work. They're just the elf reacting to everything that's happening in their physical world. Again, everything that's going on, they think that's everything that's, uh, the whole, their whole life is made up of this stuff. But again, everything that's booted into that game is coming from the computer. Everything is made possible by that non-physical aspect of reality creating this then physical aspect. And again, that non-physical aspect represents that 99.9 .9 plus percent of what reality actually is. Do you think it's that difficult then to program different things into the game? Do you think it's then that difficult or any more of a burden to the greater system, we'll call it in this, um, to have one thing or another thing in the game, to manifest one thing over here, one thing over there, or a completely different thing? It is not. But if we get obsessed with just thinking we're the character, then our reality is not really going to change because we can't be the character trying to change the physical, physical trying to change the physical. You can do that to a degree, but you're gonna to have to hustle, grind, and really grind yourself into the dirt where we can just access this greater computer system. We can access this non-physical part of ourselves to start requesting different things into the game. So ultimately to put this in a nutshell is we are living in what's called a subset of a superset. The subset is the game, the superset is the computer, which without we can never play the game or the game could not even exist. And if we access the computer, more, if we go into the non-physical, if we access the spiritual and mental realms, which are more connected to the computer than just always the physical realm, which is the game, then we can program different things into the game from that perspective. We can't program things into the game as the character that's being programmed, but we can step out and in a way become the developer via the spiritual and mental realms and plug new things into the game or develop and script new things into the game. Now, how do we do that? 
Like I mentioned, we have to pause the character on screen or stop identifying as the character. Because if you think you're the elf and you're nothing but the elf, you're just going to keep moving in the same way you've been moving. You'll be at effect to everything in your life, never being at cause too much at all. But the way we start programming new rules into the game or start working with greater rules, first principles, rules that are beyond just the physical, that actually allow the physical to even be, we have to focus on that 99.9% .9 which is, again, the spiritual and mental plane of existence. Now, when we do this, we start to massively influence the elf character's world, so to speak, and what we call the physical world through the principle of cause and effect. Again, with correspondence, if you do one thing on these planes of existence, they will have a correspondence on the other, and there will be a cause and effect. If you create certain causes, so program certain things from the computer into the game, it will create certain effects in the game. If you, for example, start to feel differently in the spiritual, you entertain different emotions most of the time, it's going to create new effects. If you then think differently, more positively, visualize more of what you want, not what you don't want, it will create different effects in the physical. It will create a new energetic history in your physical because it has to by law. So if you learn how to work with energy in the inner world, again, with the spiritual and mental planes of existence, and you also pay attention to the feedback in the physical as well, which we'll get into, you are going to start molding reality in the ways that you want. Now, before moving on to some more details, I want to give you an example of this because we actually had a client like just the other day have this happened where we're in the first part of the program where we're going over these kinds of things in so much depth and giving amazing practices and accountability to keep them in it. And he's about three weeks into the program and he's been putting way more focus on the inner world, the physical, uh, the mental and the spiritual planes of existence using the exercises and insights that we're giving him. And in three weeks, again, on this specific day, he decided that he was going to go into a very specific type of meditation and kind of do it a little longer than usual had some time and space and he did that he allowed himself to connect to those places did it in a very particular way used the learnings that we were already going over in this as well and by the end of the day there were four business deals that were either not in his life or seemed to be going in a negative in a negative direction like they weren't going to pan out they were a struggle or whatever else that all solved themselves and brought in a windfall of revenue or future revenue for him <laughs> yeah right I just want to um, kind of give my my overall summary real quick with a with a a positive confirmation that was huge for me on Wednesday. Um, laying this foundation is like, oh my God, I'm so excited for this course. Um, but gosh, the, the richness of this content, I, I'm super thankful to be a part of. I was specifically doing this one that Ava sent me, this this breath one that kind of took me in this you know numb body, body's asleep, mind's totally aware state. And I was doing it really intently. I told her, this is exhausting. Like this is not a relaxing meditation. It's what you call inner size, right? It's totally working on that inner being. And it put me in this state that as soon as it was over, and I don't know, it was 40 minutes or so, I was like, I'm just going to do more. And it happened to be Wednesday when my kids go to dance and I have the whole house to myself. It's pretty rare I can do that. And I'm just going to take it deep. And I, you know, just started you know, sitting up and verbally affirmations were coming out of my mouth. I really wasn't thinking them or putting intention behind it. It was just kind of flowing through me. And a lot of them were around financial abundance now. Right. And I, I probably did that for another 20, 30 minutes. And then I finished up around, I don't know, five o'clock or so and checked my phone. And I had four positive confirmations with business in, in one evening right after this. So I had a really stressful um, listing that I'm selling that, I, I for sure it's falling apart. There's no way this is going to close. Everyone, the buyers want the moon. It's not going to happen. We put our foot down. They signed. We're going to closing. I had a million dollar offer on one of my listings that's been sitting for 90 days. The seller's been hurting because it's a tough market. Um, that's under contract now, closing in January. I had uh, one of my investor clients get back off the fence saying we're ready to buy a duplex now. I had one of my favorite past clients move to Florida last year saying, I hate Florida. I'm coming back. I'm buying a new place. You're my agent. So four things at once in the evening right after that was just undeniable, super exciting. Again, this is an example of how the physical can be influenced massively by doing the inner work. We like to call it the inner size, right? If you develop the inner muscles through really 
going into that 99.9%, the inner world, you will start getting the results in the physical. It has to happen by law if you do it long enough. Just like if you go to the gym long enough, do the right exercises, you stay consistent and accountable, you will put on muscle or you will get fit, you will get healthier. As long as you're doing the right things for long enough, it has to happen by law. No one is confused when someone starts to build muscle when they go into the gym, if they do the right workouts, they eat right and everything else, or you get more fit if you're going after cardio, whatever it is. It's not a surprise. It's the same with the inner world work, with the inner size. It is actually very predictable that things will change when you start doing things differently. One thing that's beautiful about when you start doing the inner work and you stop just putting all the emphasis on the physical is you actually begin to let go of control that you actually, over things that you actually can't control. You know, so many people in the physical are complaining about the things coming in that are just coming out, again, from the computer into the game, from the inner world into the outer world, and then they're complaining about the things that are here. You know, trying to influence the things that already are in the physical. And that's like me trying to take this microphone and I'll put it down because it will get weird, but trying to bend it into something else that I want in the physical. Now, maybe I could somehow do that, but it's going to take a lot of time. It probably will be very, you know, shoddy and inefficient, whatever I end up creating from that. Um, and, and just doesn't seem like a good use of my energy, right? But if I was just to do something different, do things from the inner world and instead request whatever else it is that I want, connected to that on the spiritual and mental planes and just had that come in anew, wouldn't that be a much better way of going about it than trying to take something that's already in my physical life and complain or yell at it or shift it or try and mold it into something different in that way? And one more little one I will give you before we get into the tools of how you can actually cultivate this energy and actually start doing this, because again, it's about getting the results, is called the Lego factory analogy. Now, this is very simple. Just imagine that everything in your life, everything physical is kind of like a Lego brick or you know, some kind of material that's come from the Lego factory. And there are these Lego factories in your life. What most people do when they want to change something is they take some of the existing Lego bricks that are in their life and they try and bend them and mold them and paint them different colors. They try and be the particle influencing particle, physical trying to change physical. But what if you were just to go into the Lego factory and instead of trying to fight the Lego bricks already in your life that are here, what if you went in and requested different Lego bricks? What if you went in and said, hey, can you make a mold for this specific thing? that I want to have in my life. And basically the way that we use this analogy is doing the inner work is the equivalent of calmly walking into the Lego factory and making a request versus when you don't do the inner work, it's the equivalent of trying to bend the bricks and resisting everything around you and trying to control things that you cannot control. One thing you absolutely can control is making new requests and choosing differently. And when you get really good at the inner work, you can do this really efficiently, accurately, and quickly. There is even a scientific principle called the quantum to Newtonian transition point. And what that says is that six to eight weeks of concentrated particle flow, which is to say focused energy in a particular direction, leads to dramatic changes in the physical world. Six to eight weeks for dramatic changes, if instead of resisting your current physical, you can tune more in to the mental and spiritual planes and make that request to the Lego factory, give it the blueprints that you would like to have built, and then to release and surrender the need for it to happen, which is called lowering the importance. Doing that leads to dramatic changes in the physical. We've gone over this in other videos, but when you actually make an order in the Lego factory instead of trying to change everything around you, that's when things begin to move. Now, a very important concept before we jump into the tools is called infinite action. And this is something where all, especially the mental and spiritual planes is always occurring. Because you'll notice in the physical realm, you're not always active, not all the time. For example, you're asleep. Um, at certain points where your body is kind of in autopilot mode, you're still breathing and many of the processes in the body are still being engaged, but you're not engaging with the physical body at that moment. However, you always are sending out a signal from the mental and spiritual planes of existence. You are in what's called infinite action. And I want you to have this awareness because a lot of people think if I just do a little bit of inner world work, I meditate for 15 minutes a day, everything's going to change for me. And yes, it's better than doing nothing. But you're sending out that signal 24 seven, my friend, which is having correspondence on all planes of existence, including your physical. Meaning 
essentially, if you meditate for 15 minutes or do some of this inner work, it's like going to the gym for 15 minutes, like once a month or once a week or whatever, and expecting yourself to be buff or fit or whatever else it is. What are you doing for the rest of that time? What are you doing with the, you know, how are you thinking? How are you feeling for the rest of that time during the day? That is what's going to make up the vibrational content, the energetic content that you're sending out. So just keep that in mind that you are in infinite action. This doesn't mean that you need to be neurotic about this, but can you get back on that horse more often when you fall off? Can you live from a place of higher consciousness and energy and better thoughts more often, or at least start working towards that? So first tool is we have to look at, given infinite action, what are we exposing ourselves to, especially energetically and mentally most of the time? So what am I talking about here? Well, the first thing is what is your mental diet and your digital diet? What information are you consuming that calibrates at a certain level of spirit or energy that also produces certain thoughts? If you ever noticed you watch a lot of fear-based stuff that you start becoming fearful, I wonder if there's a reason for that. Or if you watch a lot of violent stuff that you start wanting to go fight people or you start wanting to be violent yourself or maybe you're even afraid of that violence, oh, I wonder why that's the case. Or maybe you're watching a lot of things that are gossipy and you notice yourself gossiping as well. Like You're just like, wow, why am I being so gossipy? I wonder what the reason for that is. What that is, is you are being exposed to certain energies, absorbing those energies, and then also vibrating those out. And what I'm getting at here is the environment you put yourself in, especially in these mental and digital um, environments, they are going to start producing a certain signal that's going to be reflected back to you. And so what is your mental diet? What is your digital diet? What energies are you exposing yourself to? Are you thinking about what you don't want most of the time rather than what you do want? Are you catastrophizing? When you are doing these things, you are creating these neural connections that brings more of that in. You are activating certain energies on the spiritual and mental plane, which will have correspondence in the physical, which will create certain effects in the physical of a like kind. Again, you will not have things that are like, oh, super joyful on the spirit and then super angry on the mental and then super like apathetic on the physical. No, they will line up and they will balance out because of the principle of correspondence and cause and effect, right? So if you create a better digital and mental environment for yourself where you're consuming much better content, where you're thinking better thoughts, where you're feeling better most of the time, where you're engaging in things that actually excite you, and you're doing that more often than not, the physical will start, to ha will start to respond to that. Now, the next one is your peer group. One of the biggest anchors in many people's lives are the people they surround themselves with. Now, is this a call to drop everyone in your life and go, you know, just, just be like, hey, you're, you're an anchor, get out of here. No, it's not. It's just to assess what the situation is and to be like, am I hanging around people who are midwives to my dreams? Or am I hanging out with people who are dream killers? Your peer group, those other conscious beings, three-part beings that you have in your life have massive influence over you. I don't care what your willpower is like. If you spend enough time around a negative Nancy or someone who's always just catastrophizing and whatever else, it is going to be very hard for you not to feel that in your gut and to feel bad and to be, have your consciousness lowered and to start thinking similarly if you're not tuned in or whatever else it is. But in the same on the same side, uh, the other side of the same coin, if you're around people who are the opposite of that, who are always talking about possibilities, who are talking about their wins, are talking about how you can do it, who are giving you amazing feedback, and who are giving you support and accountability, and who are there for you when you are down in the dumps, but not just to perpetuate that situation, but to help lift you back up out of it. Do you think that's going to have an effect on you and your reality? Absolutely. And so your peer group is another just crucial part of this, of who you hang out with, who you spend time with, who, you know, even in online groups. Again, we have our peer group called EMF where we take people in a group all moving in the same direction. Um, who are being midwives to each other's dreams. You should see how these people interact and just how amazing it is to see them come together um, and just build on everything they're doing in the program. It's a very beautiful thing to facilitate. Um, it's a beautiful thing to see. But if you are interested in learning more about that, our reality creation program that we do in a group where you'll have these peers, you'll have the mental diet, all of that, Check out the um, case study I have down below that goes over how it works, uh, why it works, and the results some people have gotten. If you are interested, we are starting a new, new cohort relatively soon that you can check out.
Now, next tool is one you would have heard of, and when I shared the result with one of our um, clients, Brian, earlier about how he meditated, and of course, he's been doing the inner work through the program as well, and it only took three weeks, but meditation was one of the tools that helped him to have that manifestation of four different deals coming through all in the same night, or kind of future payments for those things and everything else, right? Meditation and visualization is one of the best tools that allows you to access those inner realms. Again, doing this is like the inner size. It's like lifting the weights for the inner world and making it stronger. Now, there are a ton of different techniques. All I would say is finding the one that works for you, but I will give you a suggestion of what I believe works incredibly well. Now, what this is, is also something we dive really deep into the, in the program itself, but it's called an active and passive meditation. And a passive meditation is more like when you are listening to silence, it's like transcendental meditation, or you're focusing on a mantra or a breath. You're not really bringing thoughts into the equation or visualization, you're just allowing. You're just anchoring yourself into the moment, into the present. And this is amazing. But then we combine it with an active meditation. We essentially, in a way, get the vehicle ready, we make sure it's topped up, it's got gasoline, we've fixed everything, we're in that passive meditation, we're preparing it, and then we move into an active meditation where you start visualizing some of the future scenes that you want in your life. I actually had a client I was talking to recently, and one of the most helpful things with this meditation is anytime you feel that you're straying off the course in your active meditation from what you actually want in your life or you're not feeling it, just go back into the passive meditation and prepare the vehicle. Think of it like you prepared the vehicle, you're off to the races, and then maybe you go on a negative spin. Oh, you blew a flat tire. So instead of continuing to drive with a flat tire, get out back into the passive meditation, fix the flat tire, make sure you come back down into a calm state where you can actually use your intention and boom, right back into the active meditation where you're visualizing and allowing yourself to really feel the emotions of what you would feel when this comes about. Next tool, this is called the feel great now philosophy. Now we mentioned how important the emotions you're in, which are energy and motion, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about manipulating energy, concentrating on certain energies to be able to use them in our life, to create new things in our life. And you know, people think this is some cool thing where you're putting energy in your hands and boom, shooting out a laser beam, and that's not how it works in the physical realm, right? But we can influence our spiritual and mental realms massively with energy. When we come from a feel great now, and I'll explain how to do this, we are activating certain emotions, energy and motion in our spiritual realm. Now, what was it with the law of correspondence and cause and effect? Oh yeah, if we activate that on the spiritual, it's gonna have a correspondence on the mental. You'll suddenly find that you're thinking probably a lot more positively a lot more lovingly, a lot more joyfully. You're probably thinking more about what it is you do want rather than what you don't want. And also notice the energetic difference when you feel or think about what you don't want versus what you do want. Oh, there's a correspondence there too. When you think about what you don't want, don't you feel kind of crappy and tight and doesn't feel very pleasant, does it? It's a completely different emotional feel because it has correspondence on the spiritual plane. Then when you think about what you do want, you get excited. You get almost like you want to engage with life. You want to live. You want to go do these things. You're joyful. You're happy. You're expectant, right? Because they're in correspondence. So if you can feel good most of the time, what's that going to do for your thoughts? What are those new level of thoughts then going to do combined with what you're feeling to the physical? What kind of actions will you be taking? What kind of people will you be drawing in? What kind of situations will now occur? if it's in correspondence with what you're thinking and feeling on the spiritual and mental planes. What kind of effects will now be in your physical because of the causes you're activating on those two planes of existence? And ultimately, the way we want to approach this um, and what we're building towards here, remember that infinite action thing I talked about earlier? A great way to look at this is where do you live versus where do you visit? Again, most people live in a constant state of negativity, feeling pretty poor, um, poor emotions, or you know, just really things they don't want to be feeling, and they occasionally visit as like a moment of relief, you know, maybe some joy or happiness or whatever else it is. And so our goal with this is to reverse this, to get you to a point where you are living most of the time from those higher states of emotion, energy, and consciousness. And when you're only ever now and again as a contrast frame visiting the other side, right? And we're flipping that. And the feel great now practice along with the, the mental and digital diet thing and peer group thing, like you do that and you just watch how much easier it is to feel great now, right? They definitely have synergy there. 
but ultimately that's where we're getting you to where you'll be able to live in this place of higher consciousness and energy, which again, living from there will give you completely different thoughts, which will give you completely different things on the physical, right? That's how you start to manipulate energy. This is how you start to choose new energy to cultivate and grow in your life and then direct in different ways to create new molds in the Lego factory, if you wanna use that analogy. Now, something else that's gonna be so valuable on this journey is learning how to embrace the chaos or the bends that come up because maybe you've noticed that when you go to do this and you're, you're actually really doing it, like you're thinking much more positively, you're feeling great now, you've changed your mental diet, all this, that sometimes chaos still comes up and you might be confused and go, wait a second, I thought like attracts like. I thought if I you know, did this in the spiritual mental plane, my physical was supposed to reflect that, but it seems like the opposite is happening. There's actually a very natural reason for this and it's a part of the process. And in this video over here, I'm gonna go over why this happens, um, you know, how this actually happens, like how it's gonna show up in your life, and most importantly, how you can respond to this so that that chaos not only smooths out, but on the other end of that storm, it's actually a completely upgraded life and new version of yourself that you actually wanna move into. So I'd go check that out next.